We're here in Louisville, Kentucky at Astro Black Records, talking to Slint, which begs the first question, Louisville or Louisville? I say Louisville, which is wrong. <laughs> right now we're, we're in a pretty aggressive band together before Slint, and I think the very last song we had was became the first Slint song, and then that band broke up, and yeah, we, we just wanted to do something different. Hello? No. Un unacceptable. Completely unacceptable. I'm fucking driving. What kind of a tree do you live in? Uh, an oak. <laughs> How about you? Uh, Sycamore. No, I just wanted to stop by, man. I'm a big fan of your all stuff. Oh, yeah? It's just great. Yeah, so. Yeah, we got some records. If you want. I will definitely browse. So I'll go put my hands on. We're here in Louisville, Kentucky, the new indie store Mecca, with Travis drinking a tab. They make tabs still. Guest Room Records, why the name Guest Room, I always wondered. There are two stories, one that it started in the guest room of my business partner's house, um, the other being that we thought we were going to be so poor opening record stores that we would live in the back of the store and the store would be the guest room of our house. We've been here for a week and we love this place a lot and people seem to be digging what we're doing. So, um, yeah, excited to be here and super glad you guys came out for it. It's like no, I'm glad record store it. nerd Christmas. So. Do you want to plug your new hip hop CD? Plug my new hip hop CD? We're here in Columbus, Ohio, with these kids' records, hanging out in the dirty yeah. alley, getting so filth. You guys feel like you're doing a drug deal out here on the street? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Digging through some dirty boxes of records on the sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. What's the origin of the name Lost Weekend, Kyle? I've always wanted to know. Good question. Actually, originally opened, we were only open weekends. So I wanted to put weekend in the name of the store, but weekend records sound kind of wimpy. It's like a haircut place or something. Oh. And I said Lost Weekend. <clears throat> and it was, it originally, it was a, a book called Lost Weekend. It was the best picture of 1940. Every day is a Lost Weekend and Lost Weekend. <laughs> One record I always put in my top five. Minuteman. It's right double nickels on a dime. Right here, conveniently located. When I was in high school, you know, like men at work or Duran Duran was alternative and then I saw these guys like whoa there's a whole nother world and that's his record that's everything you need in one record it's one of the best man and look they're on the road driving like you guys yeah I can relate can real relate. people real people doing real shit <laughs> Yo, we in Detroit, the Big D, Bite Cinnamon Rolls. We're happy today, thankful for what we have, namely our van, all of our money, and all of our records still. We met Big Mike, took care of our van, talking about weed, snapbacks, clicks, bricks, the short crest motor in. The shit is on point and on time. We're on the way to Stormy Records. Got to say hi to Wendy and Carl. Hot Carl, don't put that in there. <laughs> What's the hot thing now? People are thrilled with uh, affordable, good sounding reissues. And then there's the high school kids who still want to buy, buy Beach Boys and Fleetwood Mac records. Oh, yeah. The, 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 that's what keeps the store going, yeah, is selling records butter, like that. Right? Yeah. It is the bread and butter. Who want Pink Floyd and Black Sabbath because they're going to party when mom and dad go out on Saturday night and imagine that mom and dad don't have a clue, which is totally wrong because I'm sure their parents know. That's great. The cycle of life keeps repeating. Yeah, yeah. It's universal. You always, people will always party to Black Sabbath. <laughs> We're here at UHF Music in Royal Oak, Michigan, Detroit. Dennis Coffee. 
I was going to McKenzie High School in Detroit, and uh, somebody called me out of the blue. His name was Vic Gallen, and uh, he wanted us to uh, uh, record two songs so he could put out a record. So I got the musicians lined up, and I had to get one of them old enough to drive because I was only 15 and didn't have a driver's license. So uh, anyways, that's how that all happened, and we went and did the session. You know, he played it on guitar, and he played really guitar and sang, and we learned the song, and uh, we recorded the song in an afternoon, both of, both sides, and, uh, and I got paid. I said, this is great, and then three weeks later, I heard myself on the radio. I said, man, this is cool. I like this. The first record I did at Motown was Cloud Nine for The Temptations. That's where I bought the brought the wah wah pedal over, and then after that I was doing all the Temptations stuff, even to the intro on Just My Imagination, and then I was doing Psychedelic Shag, Ball of Confusion, all that stuff. And of course, you know the Rodriguez stuff, the Cole Fact album, was just it's just a great album. It's still mm -hmm. what he sang about then is still just as relevant now as it was then. Gonna learn how to 